Hebrews 11.4 By faith, Abel offered unto God and more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, and God testified of his gifts, and by, by it he been dead, yet speaketh. I'm going to talk to you on the sacrificial faith in a moment. You know, when the issue of sacrifice come in, people begin to redraw. When the issue of sacrifice comes into being, people begin to redraw because people don't want to hear the word sacrifice. You understand? People don't want to hear that word. So when you talk about sacrifice, people don't respond properly because they think, why sacrifice? Why sacrifice? Why should we sacrifice? Jesus has already sacrificed for us. So why should we sacrifice? Jesus, what he did was the major sacrifice for forgiveness of sin. Major sacrifice. What Jesus did was to sacrifice on our behalf for sin to be forgiven. There was no man on earth or in history that could stand in to sacrifice for us except the man Jesus. You understand? So Jesus was the only man qualified to stand in between man and God to sacrifice his life for the salvation of mankind. So we are here today because of the sacrifice of Jesus. Are you getting that? We are sitting here today not because of our own sacrifice, not because of our own deeds, but we are sitting down here today because of the sacrifice he sacrificed for all of us. Then aside that major sacrifice of salvation that God has given to us by his son, we individuals must also have our own sacrifices we have to do to be able to achieve certain purposes that God has for our lives. That's what Jesus said. Any man that come after me must first deny himself and take up his cross. Not Jesus' cross, your, your own cross. Any man that come after me must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So Jesus has his cross. We also have our own crosses we have to be carrying. Have I'm blessing you today. Nobody can carry your cross for you except you must carry it yourself. And most often, we look at others to carry our cross for us. We look at other people to do the sacrifices on our behalf. And when they fail to do it, we think, oh, then means that all hope is lost. But the word sacrifice, meaning exchange of values, the word sacrifice simply means a change of what? Values. You have something to offer in order to exchange something. A sacrifice. Any man that runs away from sacrifice, runs away from the quality of life he or she wants to live. Are you getting that? Any man that runs away from the sacrifices that God has present to him to sacrifice, run away from the quality of life he or she want to live. Because in life, we have qualities when it comes to life. You understand? And if you are going to have a quality of life, you must give a quality of sacrifice. Get it. Don't dodge it. Take it the way it's presented. And I'm going to talk on three aspects of sacrifice today. Three. If God willing, I'm able to finish the three. I'll build the other ones, other days to come. Number one sacrifice that you must embark on is the sacrifice towards the things of God. 
the things of God. The sacrifice you must embark on is a sacrifice of the things of God. Things of God. And Solomon, according to the Bible, went to the basin altar and offered unto the Lord thousands of sacrifice. And that night, God appeared to him and said, Ask me what you want, and I will do it unto you. So the wisdom of so Solomon was not a gift. It was a sacrificial wisdom that he attained. Because God didn't ask him when he had never offered sacrifice. It was after he has offered the sacrifice unto the Lord, and God smelled the sacrifice, God said, Ask me what you want, and I will do it unto you. You understand? So that wisdom we are praying, God giving the wisdom of Solomon. God giving the wisdom of Solomon. God giving the wisdom. It's a wrong prayer you are praying. It came by sacrifice. It came by offering an expensive sacrifice that touched the heart of God. You see the rainbow in the sky. Whenever it rains, there's a rainbow. It was a covenant between God and Noah. Genesis 8, when we read from verse 20, the Bible says that. And Noah took out of his floors and rams and sheep, and then he offered it as a burnt offering unto the Lord. And the Lord smelled the sweet savor of that sacrifice, and God said, From henceforth, I will never destroy the earth as I have done. As the earth remaineth, seed time. Harvest time shall never cease. It was a promise to Noah by sacrifice. Don't become a daydreamer. Daydreamers are those who are dreaming that one day shall be well without any sacrifice. Daydreamers are those who are saying, Oh, I know one day the Lord is going to visit me and God will never show up because there has never been sacrifice that will draw God down. Get it. There is a sacrifice expected of every child of God to offer to attain a height of God's expectation. It's not a joke. It's never a joke. Stop dreaming as a daydreamer. Some of you think, oh, one day when they are, well, God will do it. Read your Bible. There are many that... God spoke to us about both in the New Testament and the Old Testament. Remember the woman that brought the alabaster box of perfume? It was, he broke it. It was an expensive perfume. Not cheap. Very costly. So there was a comment made by Judas. Judas said, if we should have sold this thing and give the money to the poor because it was very expensive. Jesus looked at the offer of the woman and said, woman, all your sins have been forgiven. All your sins. Jesus has never spoken forgiveness to people many times, only two or three times. See, all your sins have been forgiven. One day, I was having an indoor crusade. Indoor crusade is a crusade held in the church building, and the place was packed full to capacity. And four friends brought their friend. And when they brought their friend, they noticed that there was no way to enter. So they climbed the roof of the building and removed the roofing sheet and draw their friend through the roofing sheet, which is uncommon, which is extraordinary, which other people cannot do, and draw the, the sick person in front of Jesus. And Jesus, looking at their faith and their sacrifice, he said to them, Man, your sin are forgiven. Rise up and take up your bed. He forgot about other people and pay attention to sacrificial people. You need to learn how to sacrifice to the things of the kingdom of God to draw God into your affairs. Abraham came on the scene and said to him, Genesis 22, Take thy only son Isaac, only son Isaac, take him, go to one of the mountains and offer him as a burnt offering or sacrifice. Abraham, early in the morning, rose up and took his son. After arriving at the place of sacrifice, he tied the son and put it in the altar and took up the knife, wanted to slaughter his son. The voice spoke from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, touch not thy son. 
For now I know that thou feareth me, because you did not help thy only son, which I have given to you. He said, I swear not by any other thing, but I swear by myself. Oh boy. In blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply you. And through thee, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. <laughs> that declaration, that pronouncement wouldn't have come if there has never been sacrifice. Stop becoming a daydreamer. I keep repeating that. Wake up to the reality of life. That the best of life demands the best of sacrifice. The day you start sacrificing, that is the day you will take the dignity of your destiny into work. I'm telling you. The dignity of every man is in his sacrifice. The qualityness of every human being is in his sacrifice. The day you start sacrificing, that is the day you take up your destiny into your own hands. Get it. Stop dreaming. Don't be surprised. If you see me tomorrow in a position you are not expecting. Because it is all determined by my sacrifice. Get it. How many times do you talk to God? How many times do you offer yourself to God when God is looking for you? Some of you are too busy to even pray in your own house. Some of you are busy to even fast. Yet you are dreaming bigger than your effort. A doctor will spend seven years in medical school. You want to become a specialist. You spend more years in medical school to become a specialist. Eye specialist. No specialist. Teeth specialist. It doesn't come on silver platter. That is the reason why you can work in the company. And other people will come from somewhere and take over your place because it has to do with qualification. Get it. You wake up one day and find out that you have arrived at your old age and nothing because you have never sacrificed something that will cost you. Every child of God that is hearing me today, here and ever, Never forget, it is only sacrifice that brings quality of life you want to live. A man that is sowing on a one plot of land, expecting 50 bag of, of corn, is a daydreamer. A man must sow in about five plots or six plots or seven plots to be able to expect 50 bags of corn in the harvest time. Your input will determine your output. Get it? <laughs> and one thing is that nobody knows what you are doing except yourself. <laughs> That's one of the deceptions. Nobody knows what you are doing except yourself. I can't know it except by revelation. I can't know it. You know what you are, you are doing. In the harvest time, don't be surprised at your results because you will reap according as you have sown. Get it. Develop your faith like Abel. He offered unto God an excellent sacrifice. Excellent. Excellent is beyond good. Excellent is beyond you have done well. Excellent gives you a standing ovation. Excellent gives you a separation from the others. Excellent gives you, are you getting what I'm saying? Excellent gives you a uniqueness that others does not possess. <laughs> That's what we're talking about here. See, it doesn't matter who you are. It is your sacrifice that defines who you are. <laughs> Get it or leave it. One day Jesus climbed the mountain with the three of his disciples and left the nine. You remember that story? And they went and waited and then Elijah appeared. Moses also appeared. They had an encounter with God. 
When they came down, they brought a child that had epilepsy. Nine of the disciples could not cast the demon out. What happened? The man saw Jesus and said, Master, I brought my son to your disciples. He had the spirit of epilepsy. He fell into water. He fell into fire. I brought him to thy disciples and they could not cast him out. Oh boy. Jesus looking at them and said, Oh, thou little feet, how long will I be with you? He said, bring him. As the demon saw the man, saw Jesus, the demon threw the guy down and he came out with a loud voice. Peter, being amazed and surprised, the word surprised guys is below. He was shocked. He held Jesus' hand and drew Jesus to aside and said to Jesus, Jesus, why couldn't we why couldn't Jesus look at him and say, because of your unbelief? Then he said, this kind of demon can never be cast out except by what? Fasting and what? Prayers. Get it? The reason why you couldn't produce the results that I just produced is because you have been eating for a very long time. The qualityness of a man's destiny depends on the qualityness of his sacrifice whilst living get it get it you know we have been living like daydreamers somebody will sleep from morning to evening expecting beyond and uh, beyond expectation beyond his dreams somebody doesn't read his bible somebody doesn't fast somebody doesn't give Somebody doesn't live holy. Somebody doesn't live righteous. Somebody doesn't walk in the ways of God. Yet the person is dreaming that one day, somehow, God must visit them. So we wake up in our future and notice that we have not become what we are desiring to be. Then we begin to blame this person, blame that person, blame this person, blame that person. A man that prays is a man that paved way for his destiny. What happened to Jabez? Jabez said, my name has been hunting me and destroying me. Oh God, change my name. Through what? Through the medium of prayer. The Bible says his name was changed. I have been coming as the year started. I keep coming. I have one thing in mind. I am not doing it for members. I am doing it for myself. When they start begging you to go to church, start begging you to come to church, start begging you to fast, start begging you to read your Bible, <laughs> you are endangering your destiny. Because you have your cross to carry. I have my own to carry. We all must carry our cross to our destination. No man will do that for you. Get it. If your parents send you to school to study administration, you understand? At school, and you choose not to go to school, but go with friends to jam, to disco, to nightclub. Remember, at the end of the day, when you become a coconut seller, don't let it surprise you because it pays to become an administrator. Instead of you to study, sit down. And steady. You sit down. You have become a Rastafarian. Salasia. Peace. They have given you kind names. You leave the compound of the school. Go around. Thinking you are doing your parents. I have this news for you. You will regret it one day. And it will be too late to attend adult education. Get it. It will be too late. Sacrifice is the gateway to the future you have been dreaming about. Oh boy. I say sacrifice is the key to assess the destiny that God has designed for your life. <laughs> Get it. <laughs> Get it. So learn how to sacrifice in the things of God, that is the first thing you need to be doing. I don't want to go far, but see, 
get brief knowledge I presented to you. There is nothing too costly when it comes to giving to God, when it comes to sacrificing to God. David put it this way. He said, I will not give to the Lord. I will not give to the Lord anything that will cost me nothing. I will not offer to the Lord anything that will not cost me pain. I will not offer. So does it mean you just offer anything? No, you offer things that will cost you. When you sit down, you can't forget. When you sit down, you can't comprehend. It costs you. Today we have a bunch of Christians who are believing God for good marriage, good husbands, good lifestyle, and they can't afford to deny themselves and live holy life. Sometimes even some people caught in together before they will go to the altar. The woman is pregnant for eight months. Walking this way. You can't sacrifice. That's why the power of God cannot move. I'm not here to tell you. The Lord is going to bless you. The Lord is going to raise you. No. I will tell you what it will cost you. For the Lord to bless you. <laughs> Get it. I will tell you that it must cost your money. It must cost your life. It must cost your time. It has cost your investment. It must cost your life. For the Lord to bless you. It's not just saying it. It is acting it. Hallelujah. Do you think it's a pleasant thing for a man of God not to buy a good car for himself, not to live in a good house for himself? It's not an easy thing. When people you are better than are doing such a thing, but you see, it has to do with your way of thinking, your way of understanding. The kingdom of God first, boy, and any other thing, shall be added the, you can seek ye first the kingdom of God there is a seek ye other things seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and any other thing shall be what? added added today the, the preachers have twisted the gospel pastors have twisted the gospel you are living in sin the pastor said the Lord will bless you you are a liar. The pastor said, the Lord is going to promote you. <laughs> you are an adulterer. The Lord is going, to, is going to elevate you without addressing your sin issue. No, God first, when he heals people, he said, go and sin no more. <laughs> you must learn how to pay price. Price. To serve God. You know, Christianity is not a joke. As pastors have made it as a joke. Oh. It's not a joke. Oh. Jesus put it this way. He said, if your eye is deceptive, do what? Pluck hair. Pluck it and throw it away. If your hand is worrying you, cut it. For it is better to go to heaven with one eye than to find yourself in hell with your two eyes get it you can't walk with God and not pay price I'm giving you an assignment go and take your Bible start reading from Genesis to Revelation you will find out people that walk with God and what it costs them so you change your way of thinking all these prosperity preachers that have come that God will bless you God will raise you God will bless you sometimes as a Christian you can lose everything you can lose friends. You can lose people. That is a genuine Christianity. Christians must stand different from unbelievers. Christians must live different from unbelievers. It must cause you. So if you come to Christ, you must learn how to channel your faith to sacrificial life. That's the first thing you need to know. Don't be a Christian you don't want to sacrifice. Because the pastors don't want to sacrifice anymore. You see, when we came to Christianity, when we became Christians, we had pastors that are passionate. They, they tell us about fasting. They tell us about how to labor in prayer. 
how to read the word of God, how to fast, how to live a holy life. Now the pastors we have, how to wear nice shoes, how to drive nice car, how to live in a mansion. So before this era will pass, we'll have a bunch of useless Christianity. Get it. It comes by fasting. It comes by prayers. It comes by laboring. There is, there is something we call me work. It comes by me work. That is where the anointing comes from. Get it. See, if you die as a fornicator, if you die as a liar, you will not make heaven. A pastor will tell you in your lies, in your fornication, if you die, Jesus will still accept you. Forget it. Read Revelation. Revelation says something. He said, no liar. You understand? No liar. No fornicator. No adulterer. Shall inherit the kingdom of God. Get it. No, you can't inherit it. It pays to go to heaven. All these stories they are telling us. Change your mind. You pick a phone and they call you. Hello. He said, where, where are you? He said, I am at Kaswa. When are you? You are at Kwabenya. Be straight. Give the Lord the help and blessing. It has taken us pain to become pastors. He said, this thing cannot go except by prayer. Hey. Hey. They are deceiving us and telling us stories and saying that God is with us. Are you getting what I'm saying? If I have five people sitting down in church and they can all graduate to heaven, it will be a greatest rejoicing before God than to have crowd. The whole place is full. Outside is full. And they are weed smokers, liars, drunkards, womanizers. Get it. I'm telling you today, and I'll keep telling you, it is price that will give you a future. If you are not ready to pay a price, you don't have future. Rise up. Rise up.